My name is Alan Jasanoff. I'm an associate professor of biological engineering here at MIT, and I also have appointments in the McGovern Institute in the departments of brain and cognitive sciences and nuclear science and engineering. In high school, I was very interested in molecules and in all the diverse functions that molecules could play in biology, and I was also very interested in the relationship between molecular structure and function. As I finished my PhD, I became more interested in bridging the gap between the biology of intact organisms and how molecules function. And I think the brain is a source of endless fascination and one in which making this connection between molecular processes and the overall functions of brain circuits as a whole is particularly important. Most of the work that my lab does is aimed at developing a set of technologies and then applying them to understand basic questions in biology. My particular expertise is both in molecular biology and molecular design, which was really my training as an undergraduate and a graduate student, and also in the application of advanced imaging techniques. And my lab in particular is focused on the development of what we refer to as next generation functional brain imaging. If we consider how functional imaging, or fMRI, is currently performed today, it's performed with a set of techniques that actually really only indirectly relate to the activity of the brain, to the brain's mechanisms. The brain activity, as seen through fMRI, or conventional brain scans, is actually viewed through a window of blood flow. We see changes in blood flow that are only indirectly coupled to neural activity changes. And what my lab brings to that is the design of molecular agents that can be combined with well-known medical or non-invasive imaging techniques and that we hope will be able to probe very precise processes in the brain and relate them to the overall function of the brain and of the organism. The molecules that we work with are typically designed starting from what we know are effective MRI contrast-inducing pieces, uh, building blocks. And our aim in designing molecules is to connect those building blocks that we know, for instance, either brighten or darken an MRI signal in an MRI scan. We want to connect those signal changes to molecular targets in the brain, things to do with how cells in the brain, neurons, communicate with one another. With MRI, we can, of course, see deep into the brain. And what my lab wants to do is basically connect the molecular precision of optical imaging to the non-invasiveness and the whole brain coverage that MRI or medical imaging offers. By using molecular agents, we do two things. First, we potentially create a mechanism that operates at the length scale of actual neurons. So for instance, if we use a sensor for a neurotransmitter, and we know that the release or the, the use of neurotransmitters by the brain varies at a very high spatial scale, we can potentially capture that with the right sensor. Then the second advantage we bring is that by actually detecting a specific molecular component of what the brain is doing, we can say something much more specific about its activity and ultimately about its circuitry and its mechanisms than we could if we used conventional blood-related fMRI. Specificity and resolution are both improved in principle using the techniques that we're developing. The main goal of my lab right now is really to get these methods working in a reliable way that enables us to ask questions that we can barely think of right now. What types of questions would they be? Well, one of the areas that my lab is specifically working on relates to how the brain processes rewarding stimuli, stimuli that make animals happy or make animals want things. We're using some classical techniques actually to ask questions about where rewards are processed in the brain and how that process takes place. A couple of the things that I think are really special about the McGovern Institute are, uh, one, it's, it's collegiality, that, that actually because there's sort of a range of interests represented on the faculty here and among the entire research community, there are really many opportunities for fruitful exchanges of ideas. The other thing that is really special to me and that I've benefited from directly here is the McGovern's interest in spearheading the next generation of brain research tools. And I think the McGovern has the resources to take risks in how those aims are pursued. And as I say, we've benefited from that.